Hey, good evening. It's uh, getting late in the day on Monday, December 27th. Thanks so much for being here. And uh, again, thank you so much for your comments and feedback on the, this morning's video about uh, the anniversary and Ruth. It's really special to me. Thank you. I want to talk about the next couple of videos, or at least for a while intermittently, maybe not consecutively, but a theme on faith. We are people of faith. God calls us to walk by faith. We hear that word expressed all the time, faith-based, fill in the blank. But really, at its core, what is faith? Is faith just some kind of a, a mystical understanding of something greater than yourself that I can't explain? Or is faith more certain than that? Because we're called to live by faith. So I believe it has to be more than just Ah, a feeling or a sense of, hey, this seems to be the right thing. There's something particular that God is calling us to. In the book of Hebrews, in chapter 11, we read this. I'm just going to read the one verse tonight. We're going to look a lot coming up. But Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. See, typically, what I hope for and what I see, and what I don't see, are things that we don't tend to trust. We're told we need to be empirical people, people of bad data, people of substance, people of facts, people of percentages, people of statistics. But that's not what's being talked about here. See, we can learn things by, on the basis of empirical data that's just raw data by itself. We can learn it by rational thought. You know, that's the idea that, hey, I can reason a couple, put things together, figure it out. Or we can learn by a sense of a, almost a mystical and a Near Eastern type of philosophy where I sense, feel, have promptings, whatever. And that's the way of learning. But all those three have great deficiencies. The best way to learn is by faith. And faith, according to what's being said here, is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This type of learning, this type of faith learning, is based upon revelation, the revelation of God, the written revelation of God that's in these words contained in the Bible. And again, we all have, we have to draw a line somewhere of, of a starting point. I'm going to draw a starting point that the Bible is true and reliable, that these words are things that God has been given to us by the Holy Spirit. If you want, there's tremendous amounts of data that will help us get a handle on why the Bible is reliable. And if you have questions about that, let me know, and I can direct you or give you some places you can look at. But just for sake of our discussion right now, I'm going to take that on a presuppositional basis that this book is given to us by the Holy Spirit. These words that are written on these pages are true, and we can rely on them. This kind of revelation is like none other. This means that I can be sure of what I hope for because this book tells me what to hope for. You've heard me say this many times before. We are horrible script writers. What I hope for is not necessarily a good thing, but if I base my hope on what's in here, if I structure my life, as a good friend of mine has said, if we structure our life on this idea of a journey of hope, that life is a faith-based journey of hope, that I don't have to be pulled aside by this world and messed up. And then this, the second component of this thing is, certain of what I do not see. Paul says that we are, um, he prays that he'd be able to grasp and see what is unseen and live his life on what is unseen. Because on what, it, what is unseen is something that is connected to God, connected to that which is eternal, connected to that which is what won't go away. Which is why Jesus says, and he means he doesn't mean this some kind of a cute metaphor 
type idea. Get a purse for yourself that won't wear out. Invest in things that will always be there. So I make life decisions based upon the things that I understand from here. And that's why you just can't let somebody give you a sentence. Another good, another good friend uh, asked me to do a series on taking verses out of context. And that fits right into what I'm doing right here. Because faith is not taking a single verse out of context and, and making a crazy decision based on that. Faith is taking this message, this journey of hope that is recorded on these pages for you and for me, and making that the basis of our life. See, when I buy into this, that gives me hope. If this shapes my values, my beliefs, my desires, then I'm buying into something that has hope. And then I can be certain of what I can't see. Because when we just trust what we see, we get burned. We get burned in relationships. We have got to take the things that we are involved with and connect them to the truth of Scripture, to the words that are here. Because I can't trust my own heart. I can't trust the desires of my flesh. But I can't trust here. Not just odd phrases pulled out of here and there, but something that fits with the living context of the Word of God given to us by the Spirit. So this idea of living for hope is all through the Psalms. This journey of hope, that describes the journey of faith. This is the beautiful thing that God has called us to. Faith, it's a certain thing. It's a sure thing. It's what I can base my life on. Not a feeling, not a thought, not a hope so, but the sure promise of the Word of God given to us by the Spirit of God. And we're going to talk more about that, but thats I think that's a good place for us to start. Faith looks like people taking action, knowing that they're certain of their hope and living life based upon primarily things they can't see. So, hope that'll spur some thoughts and feedback, and uh, Lord willing, we'll, we'll have some good discussion about this. Thanks so much for being here. Check us out at everydaytalk247.com. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, consider turning on post notifications. When you do subscribe and the videos will come right to you. Again, just the Lord bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of what's going on here. You have a great day. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you in the morning. Bye-bye.